Hi everyone. So today I'm in my little craft room slash spare bedroom uh, where my new Cricut machine is, which is what you see here. Um, I am going to just show you what I do know of the Cricut and how to use it on pottery or how I've figured out how to use it, which, um, you know, it can be used for a lot of different crafts, but I obviously got it to make um, transfers for pottery, for ceramics. So like, for example, here's a mug that I printed out on vinyl adhesive. So I can have it cut the design in the Cricut and then you weed out the design, which I will show you in this video. And then you put it on the piece here. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna underglaze and you can use, um, you know, not underglaze, you can use like regular glaze as well, but you have to use a glaze that's very stable if you want the design to stay put and not like run, obviously. So, um, yeah, I've got a bunch of these mugs here, but for the video, I was going to do a demonstration as best that I can with the knowledge that I do have. It's a, it's, you know, a learning, uh, a learning curve with this Cricut. Um, but anyway, let's get started on what I want to do today. So I've got a plate that I want to put a mandala on it so it's just an experiment I, I don't know if it's going to even work but I figured oh, let's give it a shot so I've got a plate and the first thing I did was measure the plate the circumference well actually I just measured from here like right where the rim you know meets the bottom to here and it's the same all the way around so it's this is nine and a half nine point five and that's important because I'm going to put that measurement into the Cricut app. I'll show you the, how it works. So it will print the exact size that I need. Now, when I need, for example, some for the mugs, I, you know, I got, um, I'm not like super, super like anal about exact measurements, but just an idea of how big or small this will look on the piece. So I have a, like a soft little ruler. Hold on, let me get it. So a soft little ruler <clears throat> like this, so that I can just basically, you know, oh, that's the, let me get the side with the one the inches side. Um, so I'll take this and before I designed it on the Cricut, which they have this huge design center with like a million designs. So like you do have to pay for it though, of course. Um, they have some free ones, but you know, there's not like a lot of options. So I pay for a uh, monthly subscription and I have to figure out what that is. I don't even know how bad is that. <laughs> So anyway, there, you could spend hours on the app. Like it's, it's a little addicting, um, but it's so much fun, like so much fun. So anyway, so I take the, the one here and I just like kind of visualize where it's going to be on the pot, right? And like how long I want it and then how wide I want it. Right, and so that's generally the idea. And you can, like I said, you can plug in your measurements on each little, um, this is a vinyl adhesive transfer. And another thing about the vinyl is the Cricut vinyl is I think more expensive and you don't need to like use their brand. So I did some research and found this on Amazon. These are like 12 by 12 sheets. They come in rolls, but this is, the product is Oracle. Uh, they're called Oracle 651. 
um, that's the manufacturer, I guess. And so this is the vinyl I'm going to be using on the project today. Okay, so with all that being said, the very first thing I'm going to do, you have a mat with the Cricut. This one is a 12 by 12 mat. And this is a light, a light grip mat. They have medium grip and like heavy grip. And let me tell you, the heavy grip is like, you can barely get it off. Like this is really sticky um, and it's a light grip. So I'm going to stick this 12 by 12 onto here. This is the 12 by 12 as well. Um, they do make bigger mats. They make them 12 by 24. So you, you know, they do make, if you have bigger things or whatever. Another thing to note is that I have dogs and animals and that hair gets stuck on here. So I have a little like roller thing to get the hair off. And look how sticky this thing is. Like it, even when I like stick it, it's so sticky, but sometimes I'll just peel a piece off and like, um, just crumple it and like do the best I can with getting the hair off of it. Like that's why I'm up here because like we have so many animals here. <laughs> so it's like my one place where it's semi like clean, no animals allowed in here. So this is my place. So I'm psyched about it. And um, let's get started on making, making the mandala plate. I'm psyched. So I'm going to, like I said, first put this vinyl on the mat. Now, this is always a little tricky because I like to, you have to line it up from the top corner here, like perfectly. I mean, not super perfect, but as perfect as you can get. So oh, there's a ladybug. A dead one. Ooh. All right, so let's let me line this up and we'll get started. I'm going to use a ruler to just line this up to try to stay as close as possible to the lines. Just as a guide. Okay. Now, you put this down with the paper side against the mat. So the vinyl side up. There's a wrinkle in it, but that's okay. Wow, that actually helped out a lot. Okay. Now, um, you do get these like bubbles. So with the Cricut, it comes with this like tool that you can use to um, get the uh, any air bubbles out like this, which is important and any wrinkles too. You can see them if you look close. It's not like a hundred percent even, but it's okay because it's nine and a half by nine and a half. If it was like twelve by twelve, then I'd have to be super like super accurate with this twelve by twelve sheet of vinyl. So essentially, once I get the design set up on the um, Cricut app, I'm going to feed this into the Cricut like this. 
and it's going to cut my design, which is so cool. So let's get the computer and do set it up. And I'll show you that next. So anyway, I'm on the Cricut app and I want to start a project right now. I want, I already started the mandala that I'm going to do, but I'm going to start over so you can see how it's done. So I'm going to go new project. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my stuff. These are images I've like uh, loved or liked or whatever. And it goes into my stuff. I'm going to go over here to images. And this is all the stuff I've recently added. There's like a ton of them. Like, I mean, forever and ever and ever. Just, just so many things. Um, I'm going to choose a simple mandala because it's my first time. And I just want to have a good experience with it. <laughs> I don't want to get discouraged right off the rip. So I'm just going to go with this one. So I'm going to add this to my canvas. Oh my gosh, there's like ladybugs everywhere. They're good luck, so I'm going to leave her. Okay, add to canvas. Add it to canvas. View canvas. Okay. So, I want the size to be 9.5 by 9.5. So, I go over to size. See the lock icon? You just click unlock. And then, I can go in here. <coughs> Sorry. I can go in here and change that to 9.5. And then that's the width and the height. I'm also going to go to 9.5. And then just like click there so it populates and then I lock it. Now, the, here's where it gets a little um, confusing. Like, if I don't combine all of the, see how it has layers here? It has like all, all the cuts, like all the shapes within the mandala. Well, and because there's black and white, like it'll, it'll have multiple mats, which is annoying. So I want to combine all of these into like one image. And it's not always as complicated, like if you have just like a fern, right? Like, for example, this mug was just a fern. That was a simple design. And then a flower. Like, so simple. But, of course, I have to go all, like, you know, technical. Because that's just how I roll. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to combine all these. Um, and I'm going to unite them. So now when I go to make it, which I'm going to do next, save project. Um, no, because I already saved it before. So now this comes up and it says, how will you load all of your materials for this project? And I'm going to load it on a mat and then the size of the mat, click the 12 by 12. If it's the 12 by 24, you click that one, confirm. Now it takes me to my mat. This is the mat and it has a preview of it. So it's gonna say material load type on that, material size. Now you can have this mirror thing here. This is for like, if there's words and you're making like t-shirts or whatever, you put the mirror, you click mirror. So it'll come out backwards, which is what you'll need to like make another project. But we're sticking to this one. Okay, so now I'm going to continue. Please connect your Explore 3. Mm -hmm. And then it says it asks you for the material. Smart vinyl removable. Okay, so base material set to smart vinyl removable. 
pressure. I like to do more because that's like the the cutter tool in the Cricut. So I want it to have as much pressure as possible. Load tools and material. And then I press go. So this is where I move this aside. And I get my mat. And load her in like this. Line it up to the little has these little clip things. And see how, I don't know if you can see, but this is flashing. And that means go. There's a flashing thing. Let me see if I can show you. Oops. Okay, so that means go. My camera just got all weird and awkward angle. So let me fix that. Okay, it's loaded up. I'm gonna press go. And the cricket is going to cut the mandala, hopefully. Oh my gosh. There was something on it. Alright. Oh, that wasn't go. Sorry. That was load. And now I'm pressing go. And it's preparing. And the reason that first one is on there. Oh. So the reason um, it reads, the, so the cricket reads the mat to make sure I think that it's the right material and the right size because Matt made me custom sized mats. Like I didn't know that you couldn't use like a six by six or like a, like make your own size and it wouldn't, it wouldn't work right. It like kept spitting it out. So it like, that's why they have like a review button first. Cause it'll literally feed into the machine. The machine reads it. And then if it's good, it'll say press go. So that's that. I hope that was informative, but it's almost done. Pinching. And the computer says this, like, cutting, it's at 75%. It's almost done. Okay, so it's, it's completed. It probably took about five minutes to, I don't know if you can see the design. Clearly, I mean, it's on white. It would probably be helpful if I had more black, but I don't, I didn't have enough black because I would have been able to see it better. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but the design is definitely on here. Now I have to weed it, which is like the longest part and can be rather tedious if you have a lot of like, um, if you have a lot of intricate lines. Um, I do recommend that you, let me just move this, it's bothering me. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I do recommend if you do have a Cricut or try to use it for pottery um, designs, I recommend in the beginning Picking designs that have thicker lines and not thin, like delicate lines. Like the first few projects, like just try to pick something that's like, it has thicker lines. And that's what I did here for this bigger project that I'm doing. So another thing to think about, you got to think it through. It's probably easier if I show this to you on the Cricut, I mean on the app. So hold on a sec. Let me get it. Looking at this design, what you want to think about. Now, this confuses me sometimes um, as well. Now, because it's kind of opposite. Like, it depends on what the design you're looking for. So, like, the black 
spaces in this design, to me, I'm going to be using black underglaze or a color underglaze, right? So you don't want to take this part. It's called weeding. You don't, because you're going to weed this design with a tool. This is one of the weeding tools I use. And you're going to like weed out, weed out the lines that, um, that are going to be painted rather. See what I mean? So, so I want the black, all the black to stay. This is how I have to think about it because it's, it's a little confusing. It's counterintuitive when you're doing this on pottery. So, so take the black, we're going to take the black out, which means that the white, the white part, these lines will stay on, on the, um, the vinyl. So essentially, when you pull it off the vinyl to put it onto the plate, these black sp spaces will all be empty because you're going to paint them in. So I know, to me, it confuses me for some reason. I don't know, but I really have to think it through when I'm designing something on here for pottery. There are other designs that are really simple, like the fern I showed you, like, you know, it's already solid and you just like pull it out of the, out of the vinyl and stick it on there. And essentially I'm just going to put, I'm going to glaze this all over and then pull these off and it's going to leave the clay raw just where this transfer is. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, when I start to weed this, if you can even see, because of course it's on white, but maybe what I'll do is pull off, I'll pull off some of it now so you can see what I mean, right? So see the design, let me move the camera down, right? So the black like is um, what will be painted. So like these lines here, so, yeah, so I'm going to weed out this. I know, it's like, it's a little bit time consuming, but, but look, you just pull it off. See? And so you just have another, I mean, you can save these if you want or not, you know, you can just throw them away. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet, but so I'm going to start weeding this entire design. And I'll probably fast forward the whole thing so I don't bore you with weeding. <laughs> okay, but I just wanted to point that out. Hopefully it makes sense. It will by the end of the video. All right, be, be right back. Okay, so next up, I'm going to be using transfer tape to apply on top of the design. I would like to tell you not to use the strong grip, which is what I did. I made a big mistake the first time around. You'll see why later in the video. So do not use strong grip. Use a light grip transfer tape. I'm cutting a piece and then I'm going to apply it on top of the design and then start smoothing. here I'm just smoothing 
any air bubbles out, really getting a good adhesion with the transfer tape onto the, um, the design. So there are no you know, air bubbles and it's just really stuck on there really good. So here I am cutting the vinyl adhesive, just cutting the circular, you know, shape out of it so I can place it on the plate and kind of get it where I want it to be to line up properly. Okay, so now I am going to loosely place this on the plate and sort of uh, pick it up, make sure it's where I want it to be on the plate and then put it down, get a really good adhesion because the white that you see is the part that's going to actually stick to the plate. And then in theory, I can pull the transfer tape off and the vinyl design will just be what's left. As you can see, the vinyl design would not come off of the strong grip transfer tape. Never use this strong grip. Lesson learned. I'm gonna get, actually I have standard grip contact paper. Ugh. The other stuff that came with the Cricut um, worked way better. I gotta see if that was like a light grip. I don't know. That's okay. I'm just gonna print out another one because I'm determined to get this on here. All right, all right. Take two. Second time's a charm. All right, so now I am putting my little needle tool in between the vinyl and the transfer tape to separate them. And it's a little finicky, I know, but it's my first time doing this, so bear with me. I am working um, on a process to make this a lot quicker and easier and faster. But anyway, so I'm pulling the vinyl off, and it is flexible, thankfully. And so I'm getting the vinyl onto the plate as I'm removing the transfer tape. And it's a little bit interesting in the beginning but it'll it gets a little e easier so I'm getting those um, lines onto the plate it's like a giant sticker think of it that way and so that's what I'm doing in this clip and being sure to just make sure those lines are on the plate smoothed into the plate a quick tip here would be when you're pulling off the transfer tape, keep it very low to the plate so it stays on the plate because if you try to pull it from above, it's going to kind of uh, rip it off of the plate. <laughs> 